Okay, good evening, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me know if you guys can hear my audio and see my screen in the chat box. Just give me a little wire yes there. Just let me know that it is indeed working. Hope everybody's having a fantastic um, evening so far. Looking forward to going over the COT report with you guys today. Just want to welcome everybody here. Also want to give a shout out to everybody in the in the recording. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, just want to welcome you guys here and say hello to you guys as well. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat box as we go throughout the webinar. If you have questions in the recording, feel free to ask questions through the comment section below. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. As always, I want to remind you guys about the risks involved in this market. You can lose all or more than your, or more than your initial investment if you're not careful. So please be aware of how many pips you're risking on each trade, in addition to how big your lot size is and ultimately how that would affect your account if you were to lose money. All right, guys. So let's update how the COT report is doing. Um, thus far, um, we did do a little bit of an update this morning, um, but I want to update. I actually haven't checked the trades in the last several hours, so let's see how it's um, doing now. But um, so I don't know what's happened. Let's take a look. Um, OK, so we had three trades close out last night. Um, as you guys remember, um, these hit their trailing stops, so um, they all closed out in the money. We all made money on these trades. However, they, they've they unfortunately have closed out. And I feel like, let's see, have they done better? Um, this one, this pound yen is actually still down. Um, so that one, I'm glad we got out of. Let's see about the pound CAD. Um, I'm not sure if we'd be down or up on this guy right now. Actually, maybe be a little bit down. So probably good that we stopped out on this one so far. Um, that could change by the end of the week, though. So we'll see. Um, the pound Aussie, this one also closed out. Um, uh, the the um, cancel. Um, the pound's been a little bit weak in the last 24 hours. It was strong to start the week, um, but in the last 24 hours, it's weakened a little bit. And you can see that across most pound pairs. You'll see that most of the pound pairs have come down just a little bit. And that's what stopped us out. Now, again, I hate to say it stopped us out because it technically did stop us out. The thing is, we did make money on these trades. So these did close out for profit, um, just not as much profit as we had hoped for. And I'll give you that. So um, let's do a look at some of these other trades that we still have open. So when I was updating these trades this morning, um, at the time, the dollar yen was up 113 pips. Right now, it's only up 95 pips. So I'm going to update that. Um, the USD CAD, it was up 85 pips this morning. It's now up 83, so it hasn't changed much. Um, the Aussie dollar was up 76 pips and it's actually up exactly still 76 pips. So I'm just going to leave that one there. So, so far on the week, it's been pretty good. Um, we are up 329 pips on the week and not a lot has changed from this morning. Um, which is surprising because... I don't know if you guys remember at the start of the week, we were actually down on these top six trades. Um, the, yeah, I think I remember, I remember going to bed on, I think Monday night and I thought, ah, oh, this is going to be a bad week, isn't it? Um, but no, the market's coming clutch and things have gone in our favor. Um, actually, um, what I noticed was um, if you look at the charts, um, every single one of these trades will now end profitable. In fact, let me show you this chart right here. So um here's the Aussie dollar. My trailing stops already moved into the money. So even if this thing closed on us and um, it hit the stop loss, it would still close in the money because the trailing stops already moved up. Um, well, I guess moved down because we're shorting, right? But we're already up um, on this trade. So no matter what, this trade's going to make money, which is pretty awesome. And then you look at um, what else do we have open. We have the USD CAD. That one's in the money um, as well. This one actually looks very poised to break up tonight. So I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping that we get a very solid uh, run to the upside on the USD CAD. It does appear that um, um, it does appear that it's um, poised to break out. So we'll see. Um, I'm excited to see the prospect of what this does. Um, but no matter what, that one's going to close out in, in the money, which is also pretty cool. Then let's look at the USD yen. This one's also in the money. Um, no matter what, this one will make money because 
the trailing stops already moved up so far that again it it couldn't it it can only lose what it's made so far and even then we will make some money on this trade so that's kind of fun to see hopefully this one continues to ride up as well um we will see though um it says i have pound yen trade running down 25 pips at the moment is that from the cot trade or is that from the 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 trade that we took because we did take an individual trade um if you remember um i don't know if it's different though oh yeah it's from the penny order. yeah so i that's yeah that's it's not from the cot trade this is just the pending order yeah so i'm i'm in this trade too and i am down let's see yeah about yeah about 20 yeah almost 25 pips on that one and yeah, we're just kind of waiting to see if this if this demand level holds out. If it holds out, then great. Um, um, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, but it's possible that we break below this demand level tonight. So we'll see. Um, I'm not I'm not giving up on this opportunity just yet. Yeah. So. Yep. Exactly. So I still have this trade open. It's just different because it's not it's not a cot report trade. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, I, that's all I'm doing right now is I'm just updating the cot trades this week. So like I said, um, the cot trade from the weekend, that pound yen trade made 48 pips and is now closed out. Um, yeah. And like I said, all, in fact, in fact, all the pound trades this week have closed and fortunately all three of them have made money. And it's because, you know, why did they close in the money? And it's because if you go look at the trades, um, if you go look at the charts for each one, look at where the week started. It started right here and it had a really nice move to the upside. Unfortunately, there just wasn't follow through. But that's why we have the trailing stop is to protect us from this type of a week, right? That's why the trailing stop is there is to protect from this very thing. Um, you go look at the pound CAD. And it's the same story. You know, we had a nice move to the upside here um, yesterday. And then last night it pulled back. And that's why we have trailing stops is to protect against that very thing. Um, Pound Aussie, same story. We had a nice move to the upside, got actually pretty high on this trade. And then the thing pulled back and we booked out for just a little bit of profit, right? Um, let's see. It's weird that the pound trades I entered from the COT report closed up 138 pips total. Must have done something with my trailing stop losses. Potentially. Um, let's see. How much did I make on those? So I made, I mean, it's not too far different. These, these pound pairs have really big ATRs. And so, it, and it also could depend on what time of day on Sunday you took the trades versus the time I took mine. But yeah, so I made 75 and it looks like you made 138 which obviously good for you. That's awesome. And, and, and I'm sure there might be somebody else that may be made less than me, right? I'm just showing you that from the time that I took my trades, this is what the trailing stop rendered for me. Um, and um, yeah, and I, I took my trades just for reference for those that are wondering. Um, I took my trades... I believe I took mine on Sunday around my 8 p.m., which would have been around 10 p.m. Eastern. So just for reference, that's about when I took my trades. So, okay, so we probably took ours around the same time. Yeah, yeah. And we're never gonna be exact, right? But I, and, and like I, I was saying this this morning, um, I was telling everybody this morning that there's no magical time to take the trades. I'm not aware of one. I haven't back tested one. So I just take the trades as soon as I can get to them um, on the weekends. And then the only thing I said in regard to best time to take the cot report trades is to take them on just basically wait for Tokyo and Sydney to open. So Sydney opens first. And then Tokyo opens about uh, two hours later. So around 8 p.m. Eastern is when everything's open. Okay. So if you're taking your trades around 8 p.m. and on, I think that's a great time to get in. 
Um, and some people don't even take the trades on Sunday, which I respect. So if you want to take the trades on, on Sunday, on a Monday morning and wait till Monday, you can certainly do that too. Um, it just, again, it just depends on what works best for your schedule. Um, all I think that's important is just to get your trades in to start the week. That's all that's really important. So that's perfect. Yeah, I think I think that's a great time to do it. 10 p.m. Eastern, I think, is a great time to do it. Um, I Like I said, I usually try to get mine in between that 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. window, which would be Eastern time. That would be like 10 p.m. to, I guess, 2 a.m. So I, I might go as far as 2 a.m. Eastern, but it's because it's my midnight Um but yeah, so I don't know if it makes a huge difference. I definitely don't want to wait past the London Open. So London opens at 3 a.m. Eastern. Um, and, I've, and I've never waited past the London Open to, to get them in. I've always had them in before London actually opens. All right, guys. So cool. So it looks like it's going to turn out to be a good week. Another exercise we did this morning, um, which I think is really important, Um that I want to show you guys um, is how well we're doing right now. So we cherry picked a little bit this morning, if you guys remember, and I want to show you, show that, show you this again, for those of you that are new or, and are watching this. So this strategy, the cot report strategy over the last, I think it's been nine or 10 months has averaged about 218, 219 pips. And that's pretty close to what you should expect with the strategy overall. I think, I think it's two and a half year average is a little bit less than that even. Um, I think 2021 wasn't as good of a year. It was still pretty good. In fact, if you look at, this is uh, Ben's back test that he did, if you guys remember Ben from a few weeks ago. Um, with his back test, um, he made over 18,000 pips in two and a half years. Um, the strategy made 41,000, lost 24,000. So it netted just over 18,000 pips. And uh, the, his weekly average is actually a lot lower. Um, his, he's saying that over the last two and a half years, you should expect to make about 143 pips a week. Um, and I, a part of it's because uh, 2021 wasn't as good. Um, it was still a good year. Like there was still plenty of profits to be made in 2021. It just wasn't like last year or, or like this year, this year has been pretty good so far to us. Um, but let's, uh, let's actually go back. Let's go back to mine real quick. I want to show you guys this. So if you guys cherry pick the last, how many weeks, if you go and look at this week, um, yeah, let's grab this week's results and let's go all the way back to March of this year. Yeah. This one, we're going to just cherry pick to March 21st. Okay. Pretty much from March 21st until now, there's been mostly winning weeks. There's been a few losing weeks. Look at this. There's a losing week right here. Barely loses 51 pips. Uh, there's a losing week right here. It loses 193. Not too bad. This is probably the worst losing week on May 5th or May 2nd, minus 372. Okay. Um, there's a minus 113, but that's it. There's like three or four total losing weeks since March 21st, right? So if you do an average, let's do this. So equals, this goes down, what row is this? This is row um, um, 127. So let's do a quick little average here. Let's put this right here. Actually, let's put it right here, equals average. And let's do... Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Equals average of these numbers. And let's go to 127. There it is. So yeah, that should be that should be all of this. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So over the last how many weeks is that total? Um I think that's 14 weeks or something like that. But it's averaging 301 pips a week, almost 302 pips a week, which is way better than the average because the average is 219. And over the last 14 weeks or so, we've been averaging 302, 
two pips a week. So we've been having weeks like this week. So yeah, it's pretty much like this week. Imagine this week has what we've been making. We've been making that every week since March, pretty much. Some weeks a little better, some weeks worse, but that's what we've been making. That's pretty good. Um, um, so I just wanted everybody to be aware that we are doing pretty, pretty well, right? Like the strategy is working. Um, and we're definitely um, exceeding right now and succeeding. So, uh, which, which I don't want you guys to think, oh, that means we're going to have some terrible, terrible, terrible weeks coming. That doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have some really bad weeks. I just want you guys to be prepared um, that we will. This is actually a really good problem to have. I didn't quite expect this, that we'd have such good, good times like we're having right now. Um, but we are going to have a series of losing weeks. Um, and because here's what happens with the cot report. It's important to understand actually this concept of the cot report. So the cot report trades with the banks, right? You're buying and selling what the banks are buying and selling. Okay. And, and when they change directions, it sometimes takes a couple of weeks for them to kind of wiggle out of a trade that they had and then go with a new bias. So for example, if you guys look at the data over here on the yen, look how many short positions they've had on the yen and how long have they had they have had this short position on the yen. So they've they've been pretty high. Let's look at these numbers. So seven they're at 72% short on the yen right now. They were basically there um, last week, the week before they were there week before that they were there that's okay how many let's count these weeks so one two three yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine ten wow eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so for the last 18 weeks, since middle of February, the the yen has been the king. Yeah, a long time, right? So yeah, sorry for being so repetitive there. Um, but it's been a long time, right? So the reason why I bring that up is because we've been in a nice, um, there's been a lot of currencies and currency pairs that have been in a nice trend. Okay. So the count report's perfect for that because if you can catch a trend, you're, you're almost constantly going to be profitable. Okay. Because you're driving with the banks at the same time. Um, right. Now, when they switch directions, that can take a couple of weeks to get the gunk out because they have to offload their yen position to somebody else if they decide not to do that anymore. They're going to have to offload you know, their pound position. or That actually happened to us last week with the uh, Kiwi. They've been offloading that Kiwi, and so we got burnt a little bit on some Kiwi trades, if you guys recall. Um, and so they're constantly trying to, not constantly, but they're buying positions, holding them for the long term, and then they offload them for a couple of weeks. And it's during that couple of weeks where you and I are going to get burned. Okay. So what, how do we avoid that? Well, I don't know if there's a way to avoid getting a burn, but what we can do, and this is my philosophy with the cut report is we can mitigate how much of a burning we take because they're not going to call me and say, hey, Steve, we're going to start selling off our yen. They don't tell me that. And by the time I get the cot report, sometimes I'm a little too late, right? So we're not privy to that kind of information. Wouldn't it be nice if we could, though, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? But we don't, right? And if you guys find a way to do that, let me know. I'm all ears. But for now, the best thing that I can think of, and I hope this makes sense and has logic to it, um, to me, it has logic. I hope it makes some logical sense to you guys as well, which is, okay, so the the information we have is they're going a certain way and they typically stay, stay in that direction for a long period of time. Great. 
during that period of time, we can just go up and 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 ride that wave. As long as they want to take that wave, we'll just ride it with them. That's why we have consecutive good weeks with the COT report. Okay. So usually if you're going to hit a good winning streak with the COT report, it'll be pretty consecutive as you guys have seen. Okay. Now when they switch, we're going to lose. Okay. Because they're, again, they're not going to call me. They're not going to say, Hey, Time to change, change, change direction, Steve. Get, get all your traders in the other direction. They just don't tell me. So what I've resulted to do, and this is where my logic comes in, and you guys tell me if there's a better way to do it. And I'm all, I'm all ears to better ways. I'm, I'm not saying I have the holy grail here. I'm just saying I have something that works. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. So my logic to this is since we know eventually we're going to be in the wrong direction, and it's going to, we're going to be dead wrong too, by the way, you go look, go look at, look at some of the weeks where we lost, we've been dead wrong. Some of those weeks. So the best thing that we can you do is continue to use a lot size calculator. So don't lose your mind when you're profitable, right? That's what the lot size calculator does. It kind of keeps you grounded. Make sure you're using a stop loss in every trade that's appropriate for the pair that you're using. That's where May Maytaf comes in. Maytaf is there to make sure that you're using a stop loss that's appropriate for the pair that you're on, right? For example, GJ, so pound yen, has a much bigger stop loss than say the Euro franc. Euro franc average daily range might be 40 pips, whereas the pound yen daily range is like 200. Right. So we, we need a tool like Mataf or Mataf, whatever it's called. We need Mataf to help us figure out what stop loss is appropriate. Right. That's where that logic comes in. Okay. I think it's genius. And personally, I think it's a genius idea because a lot of people just throw stop losses out there just on any pair just because they think, right. Or they, they just want to put whatever stop loss out there. Mataf is nice because it gives you a very specific outcome. It just says, hey, this is the daily range for the pound yen. This is the daily range for the euro franc or whatever it is that you're trading. And then you're just going to go with that as your stop loss. Then you're putting in after that, you've put a lot of measures in, right? You're using a lot size calculator to keep you safe when you're having a bad week and keep your head on straight. You're using that stop loss with Mataf's help. And then you're using a trailing stop. So if you by chance get a little bit of a winner and that, and that market goes against you, you can stop out and mitigate that losing week. So for example, I actually think it could happen this week. You know, we, we're already out of the pound yen. If the pound yen wants to just tank on us or the pound Aussie, pound cat, if those guys just want to tank on us for the rest of the week, uh, well, that's fine. We still made money. And they, you know, the market can reverse later, right? So that's all we can do is just try to lose the least amount possible when we're losing, okay? And again, I'm open to other ways to try to figure out when the banks are going to change. But for now, that's my, that's my best foot forward is to mitigate when you're losing, and to, and that's why I don't use the take profit because when you're right, which is another thing too, right? Think about it. Sometimes your best stop loss is just when you're having a winning week, just let those trades ride, man. Just get as much profit as you can. Because if you take in and you soak in that much profit, right? 10 times what your loser is. Well, it's okay. Take the loss, right? Not a big deal, Right. Um, so that's the other side of it too, is when we're right with the banks and we have the right direction and we're picking the right trades, we'll let them go. Just let those things go because you're going to make so much more money, so much more money on the other side of that trade. Right. Um, the worst thing that you can do on a winning week, in my opinion, is to close your trades early. Uh, that's just an opinion I have. Um, I've seen it happen to a lot of traders. Um, I had a trader several months ago, um, had the same thing happen. He's, you know, he started an FTMO challenge. He, uh, 
it's nobody here, by the way. Um, but it's different, different, totally different. I don't even know if he's still in the program. Um, but this guy, he started an FTMO challenge, had a couple of great weeks with the cot report. Um, he cut his winners early, way early. Like he closed his trades on Tuesday or something, right? Both weeks. He just took the little profits he had. And had he let those trades run, he would have for sure passed the challenge because it would have been so much income that it would have for sure passed. But then the third week came along. So he had two really good weeks, but he cut his trades early. He's feeling fine because he's profitable and he's feeling like, oh, I have two weeks left, so I should be fine. But the problem is you have a losing week, right? You have a losing week with the caught report and all of a sudden, um, you wish you had those profits from those other weeks that you cut early from, right? So cutting a trade early for profit is, in my opinion, like it's just the opposite of letting your trade go against you instead of using your stop loss appropriately. You're now not using to take profit appropriately. So just as important as it is to cut your trade early when you're losing, I think it's just as important to let your trade run when it is profitable. In fact, I'm actually contemplating, and this is where I'm thinking about improving the strategy, just on a side note. One of the things I want to start doing soon is I want to figure out if there's a way to add to the position if it starts becoming profitable. Okay, because again, these winning weeks typically accelerate and they tend to be really good winning weeks. The losing weeks tend to be pretty bad. So if the losing weeks are going to be bad, just cut them. Take that loss and move on to the next week when, when the new trades come out. Okay. Um, and if the winning week is going to be, turn out to be really good, there might be some utility in adding to a winning trade. Right. You see the logic in that? Okay. That's the next thing. That's my next step with the cot report, by the way, unless, unless I can find something better. Um, that's my next step going forward. By the way, I want to show, this is on a totally different note, but still caught report related. I had somebody ask me the other day, actually it was today. Um, I don't know if they're here, but, um, and I don't see them in the, in the participant list, but somebody asked me, how did you, how do you get dollar data on the caught report? So by the way, so whenever you looking at the caught report, I always go to the futures report. So I know we're trading Forex but I always look at futures to get my caught data, okay? So you do have um, the legacy reports and the most common one is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange short format, which I use that one on occasion, but the one we use religiously is this one. It's the futures long format in financials, okay? You click on that. And then we're always looking at leveraged funds. This is where these guys, these guys make us our money, leveraged funds. So somebody asked me this week, how are you finding dollar data? Because if you just search USD, if you do a control F and then search USD, it doesn't show up. Actually, actually, never mind. It does. <laughs> it used to not. It's funny because I remember a couple of years ago, you weren't, you weren't able to actually look up USD like that. So um uh, maybe maybe it's something different. Uh, maybe if it's just like US. No, you, you can search USD. I think they added that. Yeah, it's because it's funny. You used to, the way I've been looking, searching for this is if you just search U.S. dollar, it takes you straight to this. And this is where I get the dollar information. Um, okay, so maybe that answers that question. Yeah, USD is how you find the dollar. That's how you get to it. Um, and then Euro is EUR. There's a, actually a lot of stuff on Euro. If you, you've got the Euro against pound um, exchange rate, then you've got the um, Euro against yen. Okay, so they've got a lot of different uh, ones you can look at. Um, um, so you can, you, can, you can actually look at some of them have currency pairs. So you can look at Euro against yen, which is kind of cool. Um, but I just, 
I don't really care about the pairs because I'm just trying to figure out how the individual currency is performing. How is the individual currency performing in the futures market? However, that's performing gets put into my COT report journal. And then from here, we can decipher, okay, what pair is the best to trade this week, right? Um, oh, and Roger says he finds the US dollar by just going third from the bottom. Let me actually see if that works. Yeah, let's, if you just go uh, straight to the bottom and then just go one, two, three. Yep, there it is. Nice. Yeah, that works. By the way, there's a lot of stuff we're not even trading. We could trade other things too. We could look, there's the VIX. They have um, Ethereum, um, uh, Bitcoin right here. I should probably, I mean, I know a lot of people want to trade that. I just feel like there's plenty of money to be made just focusing on Forex. Um, I heard the other day that the U.S. stock market, or not the, it's not just the U.S. stock market, but just the general stock market has over 19,000 stocks now. And I'm just like, how do you pay attention to 19,000 stocks? I don't think you can. 19,000 stocks, guys, that is a lot. <laughs> so what's nice about Forex is there's eight major currencies. And there's, uh, let's see. That gives you, I think it's 28 total pairs or 27. I can't remember. But yeah, there's like 28 pairs to worry about and eight total major currencies. Um, and that to me is all you need. You don't really need anything else, um, in my opinion. You just need... You just need a good system and a good methodology and that will work. But I've thought about adding more to this, like Bitcoin. I've thought about adding um, Ethereum and maybe um, I think you can even trade. Can you trade like uh, S&P 500? Yeah, I think, I think that's in here. I think that's in the got report. Yeah, here you go. S&P 500. Yeah. Let's see. There's a lot. Let's see. There's a lot of, um, and I don't want to mess anybody up if, if they're trading this a certain way. See, E minis, S and P 500, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. A lot of shorts right now. That's a pretty big short position. If I'm reading that right, I need to do some research before I just start jumping into this. Anyway, it's just it's just something I've thought about. <clears throat> thought about. Um, maybe adding more stuff to the cot report if you guys are interested in um trading more because there's it's not just currencies you can definitely get a lot of info from this you can trade things like natural gas i know a guy i know a guy he has a group where they trade the cot report and they trade natural gas you can trade gold let's see yeah, let's, I think you just search gold. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's because it's on the non-commercials. You have to go to non-commercial to find gold. It's not going to be in the financials futures. You'd have to go to, like I said, yeah, you'd have to go to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, click on short format, and then you'd have to go just search gold. Actually, XAU. Oh, weird. I thought you should be able to find it in here. Maybe you have to no, maybe you have to go to not the legacy reports. You'd have to see. I'm still trying to figure out how to navigate this. Oops. Okay. Let's go. Metals. Okay. Let's do this. Is probably it right here. Short format metals. Yeah. I've never, I don't even know if I've ever looked at this one. So I should probably shouldn't get too deep into this there you go gold swap dealers manage money um okay anyway yeah i don't want I, there's so much you can do and that's why i'm saying i don't even believe and that's why i want to make very clear to you guys i don't even think i'm trading the cot report in the best way you can trade it i think i think there's so much to discover here um, that's why I want you guys to be curious and I want you guys to try to, like, if you find better ways to trade this, um, 
I'm open to working with you guys. And if uh, I don't want to, I don't ever want to be that guy that comes around and just says, I know everything. I know everything. Cause I I've, I've worked with guys like that and I really don't like working with guys like that. So I want to make sure I'm not that guy. So if you guys find a way to trade the comp report better than the way I've got it, come and approach me because I'm all ears. Cause I always want to be that guy that's curious as well. And on the cutting edge of what's next, but for now, I just want to make sure that everybody, now I've frozen my screen here. Let's see if I can fix this. What I want to do is I want to make sure everybody at least can do this. If you can at least take these top six trades every week using the Maytaff logic for your stop loss and throwing in a trailing stop that's half an average daily range if you're on MT4 or a full edge average daily range if you've got a normal dynamic trailing stop. If you can do that, guys, you'll pass all sorts of funding challenges. You'll, you'll, you'll make us pl plenty of money doing that. I'm just all ears to other ways to, to trade this more successfully. So um, anyway, any questions or anything that you guys wanted to bring up specifically today? Today was kind of a mixed bag of stuff, um, but I just wanted to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, so for those of you that are new, let me kind of speak to the new folks here or those watching the recording. If you are watching this on YouTube and you want to trade the COT report with us and you want access to this journal, um, you'll need to sign up for a 14-day free trial so that you can become a member of our program and our group. And there's a link down below with it says 14-day free trial. You'll have to join that way. That'll get you access to these classes live, the recordings, you'll get access to um, the COT report, which I've now made password protected. So you do have to be a member now to get access to the COT report. Um, and if you want access to the Telegram channel, same thing, you have to be a member to be part of that. So, um, but we don't charge much and it's also got a 14 day free trial. So that's awesome. Anyway, so, but that's what I want to make sure everybody can do is that when you're trading the COT report, at, at the very least, while you guys are learning other strategies, I want to make sure that everybody can, um, I want to make sure that everybody can trade at least this and stay on top of um, the, the signature way of trading the COT report. Um, let's see. So Lee says, I'm a bit uncertain how to approach things for next week since it's a holiday week and NFB. Okay, great question. And actually, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, and Roger says, yeah, me too. I, 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 Roger, I didn't look at your message yet. I, I saw that there, I had some messages and I saw that you were one of them. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So I actually don't even know what you said, Roger, um, but I will get to that um, afterwards. I just haven't been at my computer to answer messages over the last couple of hours. Um, but yeah, let's do talk about this for just a second and maybe we can wrap up on this question unless you guys have other questions you want me to talk about. So this morning we talked about how um, the COT report, I don't know what it is, but it seems like every year, <laughs> and I don't want to spook you guys, but it just seems like every Independence Day week, the COT report just has a terrible week. I don't know what it is. I, 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 think, I think I know what it is. I don't want to be so clueless because... I think what has going on is the banks just are not pushing the markets on Independence Day week, right? If you think about it, what do you think a banker wants to do for Independence? They want to go grill up the grill. They want to go to the lake with their family. They want to hop in the Suburban and head to a national park, right? You know what I mean, right? And that's what everybody wants to do too. So it just, it's just not a good time for the COT report. Fortunately, we got away this week. Okay, um, we got away with profits this week, and it looks like we're going to end the week on top. Um, yeah, it sure looks like we're going to end the week well, which also is a little bit abnormal last week or last year and the year before. If you go back, in fact, look at um, here's Ben's cut report from um, last uh, couple of years. If you guys go back and look at um, June of 2022 look at this so this is the, the week of i know it says june 28th but these would have been the signals you would have taken going into independence day week okay 
And unfortunately, had you taken those trades, you would have lost 220 pips in 2022. Okay, if you go to 2021, let's do that real quick. Here is the week before, this is it right here, June 29th. These are the signals you would have received the week before Independence Day that you would have taken going into Independence Day. Okay. And it's almost exactly the same result, but well, not exactly. It's minus 252. So in 2022, you would have lost 220 pips in a week. And in 2021, it looks like you would have lost 250 or 20, I can't remember. One of the years you would have lost 252 and one of the years you would have lost 220. Okay. So yeah, it just, it's just not a good week. Okay. For the COT report. Um, by the way, I did the back test of, la of, of this week, the week before Independence Day. And those would have been losers the last two years. But this year it's been profitable. So I don't know if it's a hundred percent correlation, but it just sure seems to be that around Independence Day things get messed up. Okay, so what does that mean for next week? Do we still publish a COT report on Saturday and take trades next week? So far, my plan is yes. My plan is still to post the trades. Here's what I would do if I were you guys. So my current plan, and I've kind of amended this a little bit, but I want to still take the trades next week, but I'm thinking about lowering the risk substantially. So um, still taking them. Yeah, it's a small sample size. Exactly, Roger. So that's why I don't think it's worth not trading them, but I think you guys can take it easy. Guys, we've had a lot, we've had a lot of really good weeks right? June's been really good to us for the COT report. May was good to us. April was good to us. Parts of March were good to us. So I think, I think we can take it easy, right? I don't know about you guys, but if, if you can afford to take it easy, take it easy. And I, I think it'll pay off. So I, I think I'm going to take my trades. Normally I do a, um, on my personal account, that's not prop firm. I normally do a 1% risk. I might drop that down to 0.75 or, or a half of a percent risk. That's what I'm thinking for next week. So I'm still going to take them, but just drop the risk down a little bit. Um, with my prop firm accounts, um, I'm thinking about going from my 0.75 down to maybe a half a percent, maybe even a quarter. Okay. So that's my plan is just to kind of take it easy. Um, and like Roger says, it's a small sample size. So just because it's been a, it's, a just because those historically have been bad weeks, doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have a bad week, right? I, what would be terrible is if it turned out to be a great week and you didn't take the trades at all, right? Do you see what I'm saying? So I don't want to completely miss out on those profits if there are profits next week. But I don't want to ruin your 4th of July if it's going to be a bad week trading, okay? And that could happen. I've, I've had most 4th of Julys, and it's not just with the COT report. I don't know what it is. I just seem to not trade very well during um, around the 4th of July. Um, and it's the same thing with other holidays too. I just don't trade very well um, during those times. Um, I typically trade fine during like through Thanksgiving. Um, the markets are still raging during, um, I've actually noticed this is both true with stocks and Forex. Novembers are usually fantastic months. And I think it's because the markets are hungry for profits before Christmas. Okay. So, so November is one of those months you can't afford to miss out on. In my opinion, I've always had record profits in November's now, October's too have been pretty good. Um, and yeah, it's when you start to get into December where things don't look as good, um, like especially the last two weeks of December have been pretty bad. And then, and then, yeah, I think similar to that, 
I don't know what it is, but it's just like halfway through the year, you get to Independence Day and things get kind of weird as well. So um, again, still trade it, but there, the, with that, I also want to say, um, if your plan this week was to start a prop firm challenge, I don't think it would hurt you to wait a week. Okay, if you've already started one like me, I've got a couple of challenges going on right now. You know, I'm still trading those. Fortunately, we've had some good weeks. And so I've got those to, to lean on. But I'm not looking to start any challenges on Sunday or Monday or Saturday. And if I were you, I wouldn't plan on starting a challenge um, this this weekend either. Take it easy. Go spend time on the lake or, or watching fireworks or grilling hot dogs, doing what you like to do. Right. I think that, and then just, and, you know, sharpen your saw, sharp, sharpen your trading saw rather than trading next week. So we're still going to trade, but again, just lightly. And I just want to make sure that that's clear. Um, and yeah, no need to start any challenges next week. I don't think that's the best time to do it. And also, if your plan was to maybe take some money out of savings or something like that, and then jump, jump, dump that into a trading account, maybe give that a week as well to think about it. Um, I'd still do it, but just don't, just don't do it next week. That's my opinion. So that's all I'm going to say. Um, any other questions behind that particular subject. I just want to make sure everybody's clear and that we have a good week going into next week because um, it can really damper your holiday. If trust me, I know, I don't know about you guys, but it can really damper your holiday. If, if you know, you're trading accounts in a bad spot, right? It's a terrible feeling. So let's make sure that that doesn't happen. And we'll start by having a good week right now. So far, it's been good. We've locked in a lot of profits we got trailing stops in and we, there's a potential for us to end the week even on a even better note with some of these trades we still have open. Here, let's check up on these right here. Yeah, we, we can end the week pretty good with some of these. We'll just let those continue. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I will respond to everybody. If you've messaged me, I, I've messaged most everybody from this morning. If you messaged me this afternoon, I, I may or may not have gotten back to you, but I will get back to everybody. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up with that. Really appreciate you guys. Appreciate your attendance today. Thank you for coming. Have a fantastic evening and we'll see you guys in the next webinar.